Okay, our second speaker today is a colleague of mine, Dr. Andrew Knight, veterinary surgeon and president of Animals Count. Please welcome Andrew. Regrettable though it is, animals must die, they tell us, in order to find cures and develop drugs for devastating human diseases. Another quote is that the greatest achievements in medicine have been possible only due to the use of animals, and this one here is my favourite. Medical progress would be severely maimed by prohibition or severe curtailing of animal experiments and catastrophic consequences would ensue. Strong words indeed, but all the, are all these claims in fact true? Well, here in the United Kingdom in 2006, a drug being developed for the treatment of inflammatory conditions called TGN-1412 caused severe adverse reactions in all six volunteers given the drug, uh, resulting in multiple organ failure, requiring intensive care. Several of those people almost died and one of them sustained permanent damage. This occurred despite the drug being uh, used at a dose 500 times lower than the dose that had been uh, tested on uh, cynomologous monkeys and found to be safe. It had also been tested on rhesus macaques, mice and rats, and no adverse effects have been detected. The lists of examples of drugs which cause harmful effects in humans that are harmless in animals and vice versa are sufficiently numerous that they fill entire book chapters. However, it is possible that in some cases the selection of these examples may be subject to bias. Furthermore, the extent to which animal experiments have or have not contributed to the development of cures for human diseases uh, historically is sometimes disputed. Because of these factors, Professors from Yale University and two United Kingdom universities recently called in the British Medical Journal um, for changes. They said that clinicians and the public often consider it fundamental that animal research has contributed to human clinical knowledge on the basis of unsupported claims or anecdotal evidence. These constitute an inadequate form of evidence, they said, for such a controversial area of research particularly given increasing competition for scarce research resources. And accordingly, they call for formal evaluation of existing and future animal research, for example, by systematic reviews. Systematic reviews are the key to this whole debate, in a sense, because they provide what's called gold standard evidence. That's because they assess the extent to which animal experiments have contributed uh, to human healthcare advancements or reliable predictions of human toxicity by looking at very large numbers of animal experiments. In some cases, uh, more than 100 experiments are looked at in these studies, and there's one that looks at more than 1,000 of them. The experiments are selected randomly, so there's no bias involved in the selection. And the studies are conducted with sufficient impartiality and rigor to achieve publication in peer-reviewed scientific journals. So these are the best standard of evidence about this issue that we've got. I've actually spent the last several years conducting and reviewing the increasing body of these studies, which has formed a large part of my own PhD in this field. In 2007, I published in a scientific journal the largest review of these studies that has been done to date. I managed to locate 29 of these studies that have been published in the scientific literature. There were 20 that examined the human clinical usefulness of animal experiments. Of these 20 studies, Animal models demonstrate a significant potential to contribute towards human therapies in only two cases, one of which was contentious. Included in this group were experiments that have been approved uh, by ethics committees because of specific claims made by researchers that they were likely to lead to medical advances, as well as very highly cited animal experiments published in the top scientific journals, as well as chimpanzee experiments. These are the species most generally predictive of human outcomes. And yet none of these ended up being of any clinical use, almost none of them. Increasing numbers of related scientific papers are also being published in the literature. For example, Dr. Robert Matthews recently published in the Journal of Royal Society of Medicine last year a study that included a detailed analysis demonstrating the poor predictivity for human, uh, human beings of animal models. His study was totally focused on examining and in fact demolishing the claim, the often repeated claim that we hear that virtually every medical achievement of the last century has depended either directly or indirectly on research with animals. So that claim has been analysed in detail in the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine 
and found to be absolute bunkum. Seven additional reviews have failed to demonstrate uh, reliable predictivity for human toxicological outcomes, such as uh, the ability to cause cancer or birth defects. Results in the animal models are frequently ambiguous or inconsistent with human outcomes. So that's what the evidence tells us, folks. Animal data cannot generally be considered to be useful for these purposes. People who claim that animal experiments are useful in advancing human health care are voicing an opinion. And opinions are not evidence, no matter how earnestly they're expressed by people frequently whose research careers depend on receiving large amounts of money for conducting this research. The scientific evidence on this matter is actually quite clear for anyone that chooses to go and look at the scientific literature. Animal models constitute a very inefficient means of attempting to predict human toxicity or develop cures for human diseases. But they also consume enormous resources which are then unavailable to other research fields that may be potentially more useful in combating human health care problems. A rapidly growing range of alternative research methods does exist and some of these have been demonstrated to be highly predictive of human outcomes. Since falling until the mid-1990s, the number of animals subjected to invasive experiments has been steadily rising in the United Kingdom. The last year that figures were available was 2007, and in that year just over 3.1 million animals were used in the United Kingdom. Greatest rise has been in the use of genetically modified animals, which were used in over a million procedures. Because of their deformities and physiological aberrations, these animals are at particular risk of suffering. Species specifically designed to include harmful mutations were used in over 300,000 procedures. And 61% of all of these procedures were conducted without anesthesia of any kind. No excuse for animal abuse. 